Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. So today we've got more updates for The Mandalorian Season 3, we're now just 6 days away. I am so excited to share this with you because it's so huge. The official Star Wars Twitter account Japan, of all places, has teased a secret connection between Din Djarin and Bo-Katan's past, which is going to be revealed in the third season. I saw this posted in a couple of places and I was a little bit sceptical. I didn't believe it without translating it for myself, so I ran it through Conversio and then Google Translate and it turned Turns out it's true. They do tease an aspect of Bo-Katan and Din's past which connects them, and not just in reference to the Darksaber which is obvious, but something in both of their past which quote, will become known in the third season. This is really big, and might just confirm some fan theories, some of which I put forward after season 2 back in 2020. Can you believe it's already been 3 years? Unbelievable. So here is my thinking. Bo-Katan was involved with Death Watch around the same time they rescued Din and made him a founder. Ling. Is there something she knows about him? Furthermore, in The Clone War Season 7, one of Bo's unidentified Mandos sounds a lot like the Armourer, and many fans speculated at the time that she and Bo go way back and had a falling out after the Clone Wars. The voice is identical. But the fallout explains why the armor blames Bo for the fall of Mandalore later in the timeline. The two of them might have had a friendship before ideology got in the way. There are a couple of possibilities here that unites Bo and Mando in their past. The fact of the matter is, Din and Bo didn't know each other until the events of Trask in Season 2. Bo had a bad reaction when she recognized that Mando was a child of the Watch and a member of an extremist faction of Mandalorians, the Tribe. What if Bo knew Mando as a child, but at the time of Season 2, she didn't recognize him all grown up, she didn't realize who he was. And who knows, maybe in the time period between season 2 and 3, during the Book of Boba Fett where Bo-Katan was not present, she may have learned about who Din is. Bo-Katan might have learned that Din is the child that one of her clan rescued all those years ago. It was a male Mandalorian who rescued him, but one of Death Watch, someone who must have known Bo-Katan. If what they're saying is true, it's fascinating that season 3 is going to go in that direction, exploring this aspect of their past. I mentioned this once before, but it's reinforced here, we might be getting more flashbacks. We know we're getting more of Grogu's Order 66 flashback that started in the Book of Boba Fett, but what if there's more flashbacks with Din as a child, maybe him meeting Bo at a young age, and maybe the armor taking him into the tribe, after she and Bo fell out? Some really exciting stuff, we love secrets and big reveals in Star Wars, especially with characters we're just discovering, such as Din's backstory, and we still don't know who his parents were. In other Mandalorian news, there is a rumour floating around that Chapter 17, Season 3, Episode 1, is 35 minutes and 16 seconds in length. Now I've got to say the source for this is pretty reliable, they got most of the Andor runtimes right, however, unlike the Andor show, no screeners went out for Season 3 of Mando, which means it's very unlikely the source saw the runtime for themselves, and therefore take this with a pinch of salt, and if true, this is on the shorter side of things. But bear in mind the Book of Boba Fett had a similar premiere, with longer episodes that followed. It's all about execution of the story, we can't just judge it for the runtime. So forgive me for being a tad bit sceptical. And bear in mind the 35 minutes includes the intro, the recap, and the credits at the end, so this is pretty short if true. Having said that, The Mandalorian Chapter 1 of Season 1 was similar length, 37 minutes, but it's the quality that counts, and we had all those interviews with John Favreau and Dave Filoni, and by the sounds of things, they really have the structure down for Season 3, they've given everything to this. The third season is supposed to be the biggest and best yet, the best cinematography, the most world building, and the highest stakes, so even if it is 35, I trust John and Dave know what they're doing, and episode lengths do vary, so this isn't the worst news in the world if it is true, and and I do say if, because it's hard to fathom how the source got the information. Everything concerning the Mandalorian is very secretive. We had members of the cast say that they went on set with cloaks on, so they couldn't see what was going on outside of their own scenes. It's all very harsh, so with no screeners, I don't know how they would have got this information. It could just be a guess, but given their track record, it might actually be credible, but let's wait and see. And so now my dear Megalorians, a pretty big update for Skeleton Crew, the Mandoverse show with Jude Law. This comes to us exclusively from Bespin Bulletin. They say Sean Porter, the director of photography on the Academy Award winning Green Book, has boarded Skeleton Crew, a live action Star Wars series created by Spider-Man No Way Home director John Watts and Chaos Walking writer Christopher Ford. Porter will helm four of the episodes of Skeleton Crew, with the other four parts falling to David Klein, who we should be familiar with, given that he worked on The Mandalorian Season 2. He was the cinematographer for the amazing Chapter 14, The Tragedy. That was the one with the seeing stone on Tython. 
Now we also have some more exciting updates for the Mandoverse, because John Favreau was here in London, and he attended an exclusive event hosted by Empire Magazine, and during the Q&A, he revealed that the Ahsoka show and Skeleton Crew have a few overlaps, character overlaps, so Ahsoka might appear in both. Favreau teased that even though both series are standalones, they are going to have some crossovers. This is in terms of characters, but also probably the plot. As revealed by Making Star Wars at the end of 2022, both series deal with the new beyond, the threat of Thrawn, the Night Sister army, and how our heroes are going to deal with that. And even though both series are going to be very different, Skeleton Crew being more lighthearted, more Goonies in space, and Ahsoka being more intense, mystical, and Force-centric, there are some characters which appear in both, maybe even Ahsoka herself. But I can imagine Ezra being another one, because big spoiler warning, according to the leaks, Ahsoka and Sabine are going to find Ezra, and it turns out, Ray Stevenson's character has been after them. A former Jedi called Balon and his apprentice Shin, who both work with Morgan Ellsberth on behalf of Grand Admiral Thrawn, they were after Ahsoka but also Ezra, and speaking of Morgan Ellsberth, it sounds as though she survived. Off screen, she probably told Ahsoka where Thrawn is during their duel, but I don't think Ahsoka killed her. And Morgan Elsbeth's another person who has ties to the Night Sisters, Dathomir, but also the New Beyond, where the Light Sisters, a new type of Night Sister, originates. So much amazing Star Wars content to look forward to. And so finally, my dear friends, something a little bit different. Back in 2014, Josh Trank was announced to be helming a Star Wars movie. One year later, he was absent from Star Wars Celebration, which he was supposed to be attending, citing sickness as the reason. And soon after, creative differences, that word we've heard time and time again, were the cause of that partnership between him and Lucasfilm to dwindle. But he revealed his movie was going to be a space western about Boba Fett, inspired by the good, the bad, and the ugly. Even though Trank didn't have any input into The Mandalorian, they did draw upon some of his ideas for Boba's return in The Mandalorian Season 2 and The Book of Boba Fett. But unlike the series by Robert Rodriguez, his version of Boba would have been very different, a different take altogether, much more like the Boba Fett from the Legends comics, where he was a ruthless bounty hunter. It would have gone very, very hard. Earlier today, Collider covered it as another example of a Star Wars movie that never came to fruition. And you know what, guys? I'm just happy to have Tomorrow Morrison back. Fingers crossed he and Fennec Shand are in season three. But share your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you make of everything we spoke about? If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and if you want more videos that you can't find here on YouTube, while also getting access to my podcast, our Discord server, and getting your name at the end of my videos, then click the link down there in the description. But until the next one, guys, may the force be with you always.